today we are going to learn more about analyzing a secondary source using the STAMP acronym. The first letter in our acronym is S and it stands for structure. How has the author structured his or her work? How would you briefly outline it? You also want to think about why might he or she have employed this structure? What historical argument does the structure employ? After identifying the thesis, ask yourself in what ways the structure of the work enhances or detracts from the thesis. How does the author set about making his or her case? What about the structure of the work makes it convincing? T equals thesis. When you are reading a secondary source, you want to try to find the author's thesis. In a well-written essay, the thesis is usually clearly stated near the beginning of the piece. In your writing, you'll need to do the same. In a long article or a book, the thesis is usually somewhere buried in the text. There may be in fact more than one. So as you read, ask yourself, how could I sum up what the author is saying in one or two sentences? It might be a difficult task, but you want to keep asking yourself the question in advance so you'll understand an author's work. A equals argument. A thesis is not just a statement of opinion or a belief or a thought. It is an argument. Because it is an argument, it is subject to evaluation and analysis. So ask yourself the following questions. Is it a good argument? How is the big argument or the thesis structured into little arguments? Are these little arguments constructed well? Is the reasoning behind the argument valid? Does the evidence support the conclusions that the author has drawn? Has the author used invalid or incorrect logic is he or she relying on incorrect premises? What broad or unexamined assumptions seem to underlay the author's argument? Are these correct? You want to make sure that you answer these questions and that you ask these questions, even if you like the argument or the conclusion. This is part of the evaluation process, and it's not for your opinion, but for you to evaluate the logic of the argument. So you want to keep that in mind. You are evaluating how logical the author's argument might be. M equals motive. So why might the author have written this work? This is a difficult question and often requires outside information, such as information on how other historians were writing about the topic. Don't let the absence of that information keep you from using your historical imagination. Even if you don't have the information you wish you had, you can still ask yourself, why would this author argue this? Many times, our arguments in older works of history seem silly to us today. When we learn more about the context in which these arguments were made, however, they start to make more sense. Context is very important in AP world history. Things like political events and movements, an author's ideological bents or biases, or an author's relationship to the existing political and cultural institutions often have an impact on the way history is written. On the other hand, the struggle to achieve complete objectivity also affects the way people have written history. It is only appropriate then that such considerations should inform your reading. So keep in mind the motive. Why did they write what they wrote? Who were they writing it to? Who is the audience, etc. Our final letter in our stamp is P for primary sources. When you're reading secondary sources, you want to see what types of information the secondary source author based their argument on. You do this by looking at what they cited. You can look at the footnotes, you can look at the end notes, and you can also look at their works cited list. You want to ask yourself the following questions. 
What primary sources has the historian used to support his or her argument? Has she used them well? What pitfalls might befall the historian who uses these sources? How does his or her use of these kinds of sources influence the kinds of arguments he or she can make? And finally, what other sources might have they employed? So P again stands for primary sources. In AP World History, one of the skills that you will learn will deal with sourcing and situation. This is part of analyzing primary and secondary sources. So you want to make sure that you pay attention to the following rubric that will help you understand what we expect you to be able to do in your writing by the end of the year. Identify a source's point of view. How is their point of view unique? What makes it that way? Why do they see it like that? Determine what is the purpose? Why did they write this? Who were they writing it for? Who was the audience? While you're reading the secondary source, you want to make sure you ask yourself, what is the historical situation in which this document was created? So think about all of that while you read a secondary source. Dictionary.com defines explaining as to make an idea, situation, or problem clear to someone by describing it in more detail or revealing relevant facts or ideas. In your writing, you want to make sure that you are as detailed as possible when you're explaining the points of view, purpose, historical situation, and or the audience of a source, especially a secondary source. AP World History involves a lot of writing. You want to make sure that you can explain the point of view, purpose, historical situation, and or audience of the source. So you want to be able to explain. When viewing secondary sources, you want to make sure that you analyze why the source is significant. You do this by explaining the significance of a source's point of view, their purpose, their historical situation, and or audience, including how these might limit the usefulness of a source.